greetings to all of the members of my legion and of course to the people who want to be a member of my legion if you don't know what i'm talking about i am basically the president and my subscribers voted for them being my personal legion and if you want to become a part of it hit that subscribe button and of course the like button so what are we going to talk about today aside from the title so you probably will know we're talking about gabby hanna because she is a incredibly interesting internet personality and there's a whole lore about her persona and there are some parts who i do not agree with at all and other parts where i say gabby that's fucked up and that's why i thought it could be very interesting to talk about and i will split this in two parts the first part is what has happened until recently kind of and in part two i will talk about the more recent drama and my thoughts and conclusion in all of this so i would say let's jump right in shall we so who is gabby hannah gabby hannah is a 30 year old woman at the moment for the main part a singer songwriter and her music isn't actually bad there are some tracks i kind of vibe to she's a good songwriter and that is because i think she was before a storyteller on youtube she started out on vine she made some funny and some unfunny vines i think like everyone did back in the day and later segued into a youtube career she was part of the vlog squad that in my opinion started some of her mental health issues because she got treated horribly i will insert a clip here from the h3 podcast highlights and the clip was from frenemies listen to this shit really yeah uh, that's not her makeup Fuck. that's just her face oh shit you're right she ugly the beauty aisle gabby have you ever been in there probably not she's beautiful what turn the camera off okay uh, <laughs> i'm still right here we wanted to do a little secret santa since we're all going home for the holidays and we just wanted to put it on camera so that we would have it forever i got a gift and I got it for Gabby. Oh, it's for me? And she's been needing these, and I know how much you love to dance. Wait, it's something I've needed? You've definitely needed it. We've all kind of talked about it. Are these diet pills? Oh my God, David, that is so true. Exactly, and now take four of these and you can probably dance better. It's amazing what artists can do with people's faces. Look what they did to Gabby's. Oh, it's so lifelike. She's the Gabby show? The Gabby, yeah. Ew. She's like, she's really like <laughs> loud voice, really ugly. I, I mean, I wouldn't say, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? I was just saying. Keep looking at that thing out of there. What, the pimple? Why would you say that? Because you're a girl. I know it hurt you. What the fuck? All right, Gabby, can you hurry up, dude? You've been in there for so long. Right. You probably look fine. Calm down. Fuck, right, Jesus go. Christ, are you what? a fucking raccoon? When Gabby's on her period. I was so excited to come, though. That Well, yeah, I'm always excited to come. But I was so excited to go to Target that I was sitting on my bed, literally just waiting for your text. I was just so excited. Are you not wearing makeup? It's so easy to tell. This is fright. This is an exact replica of Gabby's face. So wait till she sees it on someone else. So how often do you exercise? Uh, every day. Every day? Mm-hmm. So I shouldn't even try, right? Like, I could have an amazing guy and I threw it away because of you. <laughs> <laughs> I could have an amazing guy. That's what got me. Yeah, who's the amazing guy? Yeah, I need to keep a straight face when I said I can have an amazing day. How to ruin a perfectly good day. Hi. It's that easy. Everybody should love themselves just the way they are. Okay, so you probably got a nose job. Right? I don't know what you're so afraid of. You've been calling me fat since vlog one. It's probably stuck in my... That is so disgusting to me. And I am pretty sure that was kind of the start of everything that happened later on because I think these kinds of insults are damaging. It is publicly on the internet for millions and millions of people to watch, to laugh at, and people who are watching this think 
that's okay to make some or these kinds of jokes. These people will go to Gabby Hanna's channel and comment stuff like this. People get kind of introduced to talking down on Gabby to basically bully her. And the internet knows by now that David Dobrik is one of the biggest bullies and kind of criminals on the platform. He's a horrible person. I don't know how he got unchecked for so long. I never watched his videos because I just couldn't be bothered. I never had gotten a kind of positive energy. I don't know why people always thought he was this kind of saint, but either way, the way they treated Gabby is horrible. It's disgusting. It is bullying. But remember, David Dobrik was on a anti-bullying tour through America. <laughs> He's gotten fired, I think, but he was on an anti-bullying tour. No joke. Gabby since then has this mentality of I am the victim, everyone is out to get me. And at least right after the whole David Dobrik thing, I could agree or I could understand why she thinks everyone is just hating and bullying her. Because for a long time, that was the case. She, since she's on the internet, got stupid comments, troll and hate because she has a big nose. She's a beautiful woman. And yes, she has a big nose, but I think that makes her face recognizable. I don't think that's a bad thing. I have kind of a big nose and it's kind of a little bit going down here. I like it. I like my teeth the way they are. That's who I am. Still, if I would have the money, I would still fix it, but I don't care. I like myself as I am and everyone is always talking about accepting everyone who is who they are and oh, mental health awareness and people harass Gabby Hanna ridiculously. There are many things and we will go through it in the course of these two videos, but she is human. She is allowed to have opinions. She's allowed to, to show herself the way she wants to. Sure, you can critique her, but the harassment and the copious amounts of critique she gets is disproportional, in my opinion. Later on, she confronted a guy that made a Smash or Pass video, was very popular a few years back, and he just said pass on Gabby and said she wasn't his type, which is perfectly valid, in my opinion. But she made a big deal out of it and um, they went to a party and she asked him to call, come on camera. She was, I don't know, on Instagram live or something like this. And she basically just called him out. Oh, so you wouldn't smash me after a few drinks? And he was visibly uncomfortable and said, when I'm drunk, I will do anything. And she made a whole big deal out of it. Then she said, Oh, and you are short. It was weird, but it shows a little bit that she cannot cope with rejections. And I can understand to a certain extent because rejections suck. <laughs> but she has this thing, even though she played a few months Later, I think the game uh, Mary Court Murder or something like this. And um, it's the same thing or even a little bit worse. She just has no awareness of the things she does and the, and the things she complains on other people about. And sometimes they're the same thing. Also, there was this whole rice gum incident on another party where she just went next to him and Snapchatted on and basically very annoyed him. And he went 
completely overboard with his reaction. He pushed her away and I think smashed her phone on the ground. Sorry, dude, but that's horrible. Also, Gabby, when people say to you, leave me alone, leave them alone. The whole thing ended the way that she claimed he hit her. It was a whole thing, big, big drama again. And somewhere in between was a whole big thing with Jesse Smiles. Jesse Smiles is another Vine star gone YouTube star and she was, I think, best friends with Gabby until it was a big, big story that Jesse Smiles got R-worded by her ex-boyfriend. And when the whole story about uh, Jesse Smiles and her ex-boyfriend got public, Gabby Hanna went to Twitter and claimed that Jesse is a liar. And Gabby Hanna tweeted something along the lines, she is not R-worded, she's just brokenhearted. Obviously, Gabby Hanna deleted all of the tweets when she got a incredible shitstorm, but the re responses are still on Twitter, so... And after all this, the whole Gabby Hanna gets an incredible amount of hate started with the Kenza Cosmetics scam. Kenza Cosmetics, just for context, is a shop that is similar to Wish.com where you can buy beauty supplies for almost nothing. You just have to pay a ridiculous amount of shipping. That is their marketing strategy. And I can show you, I didn't find the clip of Gabby Hanna advertising it, but I can show you a clip of Tana Mojo, Mongo, Mojong, I don't know, where she promoted it. And in the basically same way Gabby Hanna did too. Today I am partnering with Kenza Cosmetics and they are doing a promotion right now where all of their makeup brushes are free. All you have to do is pay the shipping. I'm obsessed with so many of them and they're really high quality brushes and literally all you have to do is pay shipping. So swipe up to check them out. Shout out Kenza Cosmetics. Okay guys, I'm gonna add the Flamingo set to my cart. I was gonna do the Bimbo one, but they were already sold out. As you can see, literally zero dollars. Come on, get in my cart. So many people must be on the website. Like what's going on? I just added it to my cart. You should do the same thing. Gabby Hanna's response was... Me? I didn't do anything. So I was very confused why everybody was making such a big deal about not getting their brushes yet when the website was pretty clear about not getting your brushes for a while. So I emailed Kenza Cosmetics literally immediately and I sent them the screenshots of the followers that I was talking to and I said, are you aware of this? And they said, we don't know why people are saying that. We were very clear on the website about it being a long delivery time. And then I pushed further. I've been in conversation with them for a couple weeks now. Ever since this all started happening, I've kind of been on their ass saying what's going on. And then all these videos start popping up about um, me not caring about my fans and just trying to make a quick buck and never having even held the brushes before. I am not hating this makeup look actually. And now I've talked to several people who have all said that they got their brushes. And I guess my question is, where is all that energy that everybody had whenever people were accusing people of scamming their audience, but then people started getting their brushes and nobody was publicly saying that they were getting their brushes. So now that we've established that it's not a scam, because it's not, the website offers a product, you pay for the product and then you get the product, that is not a scam. Um, we can talk about the quality of the brushes, which I've already covered. I think that they're worth about a dollar a brush. And that's why I felt okay advertising that to my followers because unlike these and so many others, like these are plastic, hard, shitty brushes. These are actually very soft, movable, fluffy brushes that in my opinion, blend very well. Now, are they these amazing, high quality, can't even believe it, great brushes? No, I also never said they were. What I said they were was free brushes and all you had to pay for was shipping. So I'm not sure what quality people were expecting when they paid $10 for 10 brushes. And I'm genuinely sorry if anybody got their product and was disappointed in the product. But I would also add, manage your expectations a little bit. Because if you want really high quality brushes, you're going to pay a really high quality price. If you want to pay $10 for brushes, then expect to get some pretty useful run of the mill brushes. Yeah, that is a response. 
basically she said manage your expectations because she cannot take any accountability at all she really thinks she did nothing wrong but she advertised a website that advertised one dollar or less brushes as eighty dollar brushes you get for free and that is not the case so it's a scam it has nothing to do with people not getting their product that was an allegation at that time but that wasn't the main thing people were talking about she again picked out some allegations against her that were ridiculous granted that's fair but most of the allegations against her were you cannot advertise this website that lie about their products but she thinks manage your expectation you did just pay ten dollars for the brushes so you just get ten dollar brushes but that's not what it was people paid ten dollar shipping for allegedly <laughs> 80 dollar brushes and that is where the scam comes in but again that is a whole thing with gabby hannah drama lack of accountability victim mentality that's the whole thing after a while i think first came the trisha Paytas herpes situation <sighs> Gabby Hanna and Trisha they don't get along very well Trisha had some problems because Gabby asked every one of their friends hey did Trisha talk about me why is Trisha not talking to me why doesn't she like me please tell me blah 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 and Trisha obviously didn't like that they said hey leave me the fuck alone leave my friends alone i don't care a few months later trisha started dating jason nash from the vlog squad and gabby hannah told jason that trisha had herpes which isn't the cool thing to do Trisha was obviously very angry at it and said, hey, why didn't you reach out to me or just shut the fuck up? You do not make up an STD about people you don't know. And then Gabby, Gabby asked all of her friends if that was okay. Let me tell you, your friends lean more towards, oh no, you're right, than people that aren't your friends. So she, and she again made it public because people easily could figure out who he she was talking about that was a whole thing and then was the bianca incident where gabby hannah made a video where she was dressing for a day like emo girl and she put a picture of a girl up with a written article next to it where in the article it was talked about that this girl was murdered and people called her out because it was incredibly insensitive what she's done and she even put up the article about the murder on screen and claimed she hadn't read any of it people obviously didn't believe her but i think it could have been just an accident but it's also a bit of a pattern with her because back in her story time days she made a video telling the story about someone in her school or even class who died and it was a big thing people were angry she exploited this to gain money popularity whatever and even the family of the victim reached out and said hi that's shitty so she has a history with those things and i think you can see a little bit of a pattern now that gabby hannah is always 
in drama and I won't include any of the little drama I probably missed some of the bigger drama <laughs> but the videos would be both an hour long if I wanted to talk about everything these are dramas I think are most important for the whole story but we're not finished yet I know I know <laughs> I am recording now for 32 minutes and we're not even halfway where we want to go. But I will cut out a portion for sure. Then there was the big meltdown and that is not a funny quirky thing to say. That is genuinely what happened. Gabby lost her There are hundreds of videos and I don't want to belittle her experience. She obviously was very distressed, was on a breaking point because her music videos didn't do as well as before and she claimed to be shadow banned by YouTube like the views are low and like you just tell yourself like okay it just didn't hit because people don't care about me anymore and I told myself that over and over and over I kept telling myself I guess people just don't like me and like that feeling of putting like your time and tens of thousands of dollars and months and passion and work and excitement into something and telling yourself like this is going to be like a turnaround for me fuck I'm sorry for getting so emotional this is just like whoa you get your hopes crushed and like your expectations crushed and that's one thing when you find that your platform that you fuck okay i'm like oh like the platform that you've been so loyal to and dedicated to is like actively trying to hurt you and like i've always maintained it could be an accident right it could be a glitch it also just could have been that you do not post often on your youtube channel you changed the name, which is also a big part why your channel won't get pushed as much as before. Because you changed something and the algorithm will kind of wait about it. That's a known thing. Second of all, you upload rarely. You upload your music videos and you cannot make a music video a day, 100%. But that also plays a part in why the algorithm won't push your videos. Even without the harassment and everything that is valid, you get a ton of harassment, which is horrible in my opinion, I have to say. The amount, there are certain instances where she, there are instances where she should get called out for and criticized for, but there is a difference. I know she cannot differentiate between criticism and hate, but on both ends of the people hating and criticizing and of her looking at it should be a middle ground. When you look at butterflies or like any of my music videos and you see those millions and mu millions of views, right? And then it's like, okay, well people fuck with my music, right? And then when you put up a video being like, this is my dream, and like, I need to escape this toxic cycle, I need to get out of this. And like, music is my way, and my passion, and the one thing I care about. And like, you're used to your shit performing a certain way. And then it does it so drastically, like from a million, 11 million views, 7 million views. And then you see it has 700,000 views in a month. And you're like, oh my god, people hate me. People really think I'm a rape apologist. People really think that I exploited a murdered teenager. People really think I'm a scam artist. People really think that I'm all of these things. And you're like, you want to kill yourself because there's no escape. It's like, I can't escape these rumors. And like the one thing I love, like the one thing that like I thought was going to save me, my one escape, that one thing is being taken from me. And that's what I thought. Because when I saw that it was like doing so poorly and that the, the engagement was so bad, like, I, you tell yourself, it's because nobody likes me and my music is terrible and I have no future. It's very apparent. It's glaringly obvious that in that time, Gabby, for one, actually believed all of this. Regardless of if it's true or not. I'm not talking about this, but she is in much distress. 
she is really feeling horrible and she mentioned not living herself anymore twice in that short amount of time and I believe it because she went through a lot again some parts valid some parts she hasn't deserved most of it the amount and the videos mm, Gabby Hanna loses it or oh Gabby Hanna mental breakdown even though she had a mental breakdown but it's I think hard for her to take in especially in that time if you do it before or afterwards I think there's that's just the internet that is just how clickbait titles work but during that time I think it's it must have been very traumatizing to not feel validated and to just get the hate she got I don't start anything with anyone even my shit on Twitter, people are like, what you're doing on Twitter? Like, what are you trying to do? And I'm like, I'm responding to people once again, falsely accusing me of shit. She really believes she doesn't start drama. She really, really does. She mentions it there on another live stream where, where even her boyfriend said, don't do this, don't be stupid. Because he knows she does it. And yes, she is allowed to respond to criticism or to hate or to false allegations of course but one it's oftentimes the way she does it and at times it's just so disproportionate and she should know that this will be causing drama and again that is the middle ground that is missing you can respond to those things but also, you should do it in an appropriate way. And I know it's hard for her, because in her mind, she has all these experiences from before, where she got a shit ton of hate, where she was the victim. She has all of this trauma in the back of her head. And then there is valid criticism, and it all pops up again. And that is, I think, what many people are missing. You're gonna talk about my mental health as I'm having a mental breakdown because you gaslighted and mentally abused me for months because you spread a one-sided narrative that you knew was filled with lies for months and now I'm talking about it and I, I'm losing my mind? Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? To have the audacity to question somebody's mental health and mock them while they're having an emotional breakdown because of what you did? You narcissistic abuser piece of shit. All of them. They're narcissistic abusers. They're selfish. They push people to their edge. They corner them. They isolate them. They take away everything they have. And when they dare show an ounce of human emotion, this is how they respond. You're losing it. You're manipulating. You're playing the victim. Fuck you. Fuck all of these people for what they've done to me. And for them to be tweeting right now, I'm playing the victim. I am the fucking victim. And I'm not going to sit down and make a video with screenshots exposing my bullies. These are bullies. These are high school fucking bullies. Nobody points out. And then in that video, we're talking about Jesse Smiles now. She says she doesn't regret what she did because she had to speak her truth. Fucking speaking my truth. After I was being accused again that night, I was being called a rape apologist and ditched my best friend for her breakfast. A fan DM'd me and, or I'm sorry, tweeted at me publicly, tweeted at me. Again, a human being reached out to me and asked me a question. And I answered her questions and I, she showed me a vine. I said, that's not me. She said, I swear there's a tweet. I said, please show me. And now I'm a master manipulator because I pro disproved lies and I'm not allowed to talk to fans but Jesse can what she's referring to here is a fan of Jesse tweeted about Gabby Hanna and said hey it always bugged me that Gabby Hanna ditched her best friend for her award and Gabby didn't reach out publicly but went into the DMs, which is debatable. In my opinion, you can say that it's cool and you can say that it's not cool. Both fine with me. Everyone has probably their own way of thinking about it. Sure. The problem is that in all of those messages, Gabby talked very badly about Jessie, that she was always crazy and Gabby shared to that fan, oh, she's on medication and all of these things about mental health 
to discredit Jesse. Because I'm not that fucking person. I'm not gonna expose your private fucking DMs. I'm not gonna expose what people have told me you've said behind the scenes. And that is where people have the problem. Again, Gabby picking out certain parts of why people are angry and say, look, it doesn't make sense. Sure, when you just use some parts of the whole story, it doesn't make sense. People were angry because you shared very private info with a fan, which is manipulative in itself. That is the definition of manipulative because you have a position of power because you are famous on YouTube. That is a powerful position to have. And you shared private details. You shared screenshots of your DMs with Jesse to that fan and said, hey, look, she wrote me once, therefore she can't be angry at me. That is where people took issue. And in all of this, she said herself, I'm not one of those people who shares DMs. Yes, you are. That's the problem. Again, you miss or just leave out so important details about the whole story. Of course, what you are talking about in this makes sense. Why is it okay for Jesse? Why is it manipulative? But when you know more of the story of behind the scenes, then it doesn't make sense, Gabby. And that is manipulative in itself. And I, I'm pretty sure she doesn't do it in a malicious way. I am pretty sure she isn't aware of what she's doing. I had a similar talk with a person online and I try to explain to them that, for example, when you have BPD, I'm not trying to diagnose Gabby or that anonymous person, not at all, but I wanted to share how I feel with BPD. I have BPD and one big part is that people with BPD get to manipulate the people in their environment to get attention, to feel bad for them, for any reason basically and those people don't do it maliciously I did it myself I catch myself doing it today and then I tell my boyfriend say I'm so sorry for saying that that was stupid when I calm down because you don't do it consciously you don't sit there and say hmm, I think I will twist and turn details of the story so I am the victim that's not how people work that is how a sociopath probably would work but people with serious mental health issues do this because they crave this attention they crave the pity or the oh i'm so sorry yes you are right and they crave it so badly that their brain leaves out certain parts of stories to get into the position to saying, hey, I'm not the victim. The problem is, and that's where she should be more accountable and more honest with herself. She should learn to look maybe afterwards, of course, in that moment, you just feel that way. She should be able to sit there, look at those old videos or look at the whole situation and think, Hmm. that's not the whole story and then you can start to analyze yourself that's how I learned to deal with my BPD I started to analyze myself my therapist helped so much in this it had helped me so much to see my patterns using the emotions of other people so I could stop doing this so I could spot it when my brain started but Jesse this and this happened I knew no 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 it was the other way around so I could keep myself in check I think that is a tool Gabby Hanna needs and it's not her fault that she doesn't have it but it's her fault to not get the help she needs 
or not seeing that she needs help and it is a pretty unique position she's in because the arguments she has to be in that position some of them are valid but many of them aren't and for you in that position it's very hard to see you need people from outside telling you hey there's something wrong the problem i think is that her friends don't do this and the internet is so mad at her that the videos with valid criticism just go under in the amount of hate and to think after all that hard work and the, this long time that hey maybe they shadow banned me that must have felt horrible and after all she went through i think it is a valid thing to ask yourself the way she gone about wouldn't be the right thing but what people sometimes miss is when you feel horrible when you are in a state mentally that isn't healthy let's put it there because we don't know what kind of diagnoses Gabby Hanna has we know at that time she was in a state that you can call unhealthy your decisions aren't rational because if so you wouldn't have a mental health problem I know it's mind-blowing I had I have this all the time when I am in a depressive state that someone of my family or friend says oh just go out and be happy if I had the option wouldn't you think I would choose being happy over being irrational but that is what mental health issues are you are not rational because you are have a disorder that prevents you from doing this it's not just just think differently there is a physical problem there is a problem in your brain the brain chemistry is out of balance and people should stop making other people responsible for everything sure she is responsible for what she does online she should be held accountable for the things she does online a hundred percent but people should bring more more understanding to the whole discussion that's the same thing i ask from my boyfriend hey i have bpd i am sick i have problems i will do stupid things the only thing I ask from you is when I do tell me when I did something fucking wrong because that is part of it but when I get back to rationality and I say hey I'm so sorry don't hold it against me that's all I ask I want my friends and family to treat me as normal as possible like everyone else but when I snap sometimes in my BPD, just understand and don't be too angry with me when I come back and say sorry. But just understanding for where my BPD takes in. And you can still be accountable and also ask other people for more understanding of your position. Again, middle ground that Gabby Hanna at this moment hasn't found. And this brings part one of Gabby Hanna to an end. Please let me know down in the comments. First of all, did you like this style of video? If so, please let me know because it was actually a lot of fun. And two, let me know what you think of Gabby Hanna, the drama kind of following her everywhere and the upbringing of where we are today. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, and a comment down below. Check out the info box for all of my socials, and I will see you in the next time. Bye!